Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, welcome back to the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I'm KY4BDP Brian. Today I've got another antenna project. Can't seem to have enough antennas. Now, I've been looking at this uh, MFJ 1982 MP. I bought this uh, at a ham fest and I thought, you know, this would be really cool for portable. And it sat in a bag. I didn't use it. I've been doing other things. You guys have probably been watching some of our videos and uh, you haven't seen this one yet. Now, so I thought, let's go ahead and put this in a couple of the trees on the compound here, and I'll attach it to my deck and then string it up into one of the trees. Now this is the 1982 MP, and I've gotten the uh, the 80 to 10 meters, 80 meters to 10 meters. So this is 132 feet long. I mean, this is not inconsequential in length, but I kind of wanted it that length just because I could do a lot of different bands with this. And as an NFED, I don't necessarily have to put anything in the middle like the soda beam. So, yeah, that's that's the new antenna project. Let's take the MFJ 1982 medium power up to 300 watts. Let's uh, let's talk about orientation in the next segment. Let's get an idea of how to string this up. Be right back. All right, so we've had a look at the uh, MFJ 1982 medium power in fed antenna. Now we're getting an idea of which trees do we want to use on the back of the compound here behind the house. So I've got some pretty tall pine trees. Uh, these are uh, on one end, of course, the other one over here. And I've, I've uh, walked it out. I've got about, it's not quite equal distance, but it's close. If I use this tree, I'll be basically radiating north to south. And if I use the trees over here, I'm going to get a kind of a north by northeast and a south by southwest orientation. And based on the hills and some other things around me, I'm thinking I want this, these trees over here for that north to northeast, south by southwest orientation. We can always change it later. The fun part about doing this is I can put it up and then see what kind of connectivity I get or what kind of reception I get as well as transmission. So, but uh, the great thing about living in southeastern Kentucky, in most cases, you get a lot of trees around you. So... Let's hook it up. Let's uh, let's go ahead and put it up in a tree or two. I'll, I'll bring you back as I um, connect it to the deck and as I connect it to one of these trees. And then we'll hook up the MFJ 269 and see what the SWR is looking like on the different bands. And then we'll hook it up to a radio, 7300, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'll see you guys at the next segment when we go to string it up. Alrighty, we have the uh, antenna installed. I uh, got my son out and we got on a couple of ladders. We've uh, attached the box that has the toroid and the windings on the inside here to this little hook on the top side of the deck. Here's the cable going out. Now remember, this is 132 feet long. And then we've got the actual SO259 connecting to the 239 on the actual box. And uh, we got it off the ground a little bit. Now, I've watched a few videos. Uh, Dave Kassler's got a great video on this. Uh, this is off the ground. He seemed to get better results with the box closest to the ground. But I've already done some SWR numbers, and I'll share those down at the bottom in the description. So this is this end. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of take you over to the trees. So give me one second. We'll do segment B of how this is installed. Now, folks, this is going to be a little jerky. I'm going to do my darndest to keep this still. And this is about the best I can do on focus. There we go. All right, folks, so what I've done, I'm going to do my darndest not to move this around. We've got what is uh, essentially a screw-in hook, not quite an eye hook or an eye uh, bolt, if you will, but uh, screwed into the pine tree, and the cable is coming off of that. So you can see it moving down through here. I won't go any further because you're not going to want to watch that in my jerky little hand motion here but that'll give you an idea so we're on the deck 132 feet away to this little bolt here uh, screwed into the tree so now let's go back and let's look at this on the radio and we'll get an idea of the kinds of numbers that we were getting and let's see if we can make some contacts with this antenna all right we are back in the shack 
run some cables from the box into the house, used a uh, window jumper to get it to my radio as I have uh, had in other videos. We'll see if we can't put a card up here in the top right corner on the window jumper. Really cool. I don't have to drill any holes in my concrete or brick. Anyway, what I've done is I've gone ahead and set up on the lower end of the band here. Now for 40 meters, um, I'm, I'm showing 7068. I'm not actually going to try to communicate there because that would be down in the data portion of the band or even CW. But what I'm going to do is show you the standing wave that the radio thinks it sees with two different antennas. And I'm going to swap between the high gain, which is going to be the first test, and then I'm going to do the NFED, the MFJ uh, 1982 MP, in the second test. So let's do the um, let's do the uh, high gain 640 first. Now remember, this is vertically oriented, and let's see what kind of SWR we get on this lower end of the band. Now you can see 7128 is right in the middle. That's what I'm going to listen to in just a minute, and uh, or somewhere nearby uh, if we can get uh, see if we can make a contact. Let's see what the standing wave looks like. So you can see the high gain is tuned a little low in the band. Uh, I can tune this with the radio, not a problem. But uh, if you remember from the previous video, we knew we were a little low and it was so hot back in the summer, we didn't take the antenna back down to move it just a little bit more to the right. But that's where the high gain is without any tuning. If you look in the top left corner here on the 7300, tune is not on. So this is what the radio thinks it sees. Now, pardon the arm, but now I'm going to use my AB switch and let's switch to the NFED. We'll start the uh, meter again and let's see what we get. You can see the NFED is quite a bit flatter. Now it is again to the left a little bit on the band. In reality on 40 meters, I don't really want to go below 125. 128 in fact is about as low as you want to go because you know you're in lower sideband and you've got to, you can go three, uh, three kilohertz to the left. In any event, you can see it's a little bit better on the SWR without doing any teening, uh, tuning whatsoever. So now let's tune this and uh, well in fact, let's not tune this. Let's go ahead and see if we can make a contact here at 7128 or somewhere nearly adjacent if possible. We've got a couple of signals to the right there that will also be under uh, two. And again, uh, let's see if we can uh, make a contact. So let's turn it up and let's see what happens here in the next segment. Kilo, Yankee 4, Bravo, Delta, Papa. Station. The first Kilo Station was a Kilo Yankee 4. The Kilo Yankee 4, come back and fill in the rest, please. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo, Delta, Papa. Okay, Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo, Delta, Papa. We got two, and then the other Kilo Station. Go ahead, please. All right, let's see. Uh, Brian, first time checking, Somerset, Kentucky. Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo, Delta, Papa. Come on in, Brian, tell us what's going on. This is Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Yes, down here in Lake Cumberland on the uh, new antenna we just put up today. It's just for fun. The MFJ 1982 medium power. Just giving it a try and wonder what the signal report is. QSL, yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Uh, signal reported all on me. Okay, I got you about an S4, an S4 right now. You're a little stronger when you checked in with me. Uh, a little stronger, but you're about an S4 now. I can hear you. I can hear you, Brian. Uh, not bad out of Kentucky. Over. Roger, Roger. Yes, uh, just tr testing out the uh, MFJ 1982 uh, NFED antenna. Roger, Roger. Thanks for picking me up tonight. Roger Rogers, beautiful down here. All right, Brian, send me three. Come back and join us again right here on this frequency. Okay, that was Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo, Delta Papa, Kilo Delta 2 Alpha. Box 
Alrighty, so now in this second to last segment, what we're going to do is try out the new NFED antenna, the MFJ 1982 medium power. We've got just a little bit of time here before the net kicks off. Normally I use my high gain 640, which is vertically oriented. Ben can't hear me. Now a lot of the other guys can hear me, but he cannot because he's actually using more of a horizontal uh, orientation. Going to try out the NFED tonight to see if that will give us a little bit better. Uh, uh, hopefully he'll be able to understand me better utilizing this antenna or hear me better utilizing this antenna versus the uh, AV640. We shall see. So let's get started with the net. So what I'm doing right now is Ben is putting out a CQ to make sure the frequency is not in use. This is what it sounds like on the NFED. And this is what it sounds like on the 640. Now, keep in mind, I can hear him just fine on the 640, but uh, uh, wasn't able for he wasn't able to hear me very well. So what we'll do is we'll switch back to the NFED, and when he puts out for a call, I will try it utilizing the new MFJ 1982. What also hurts me with Ben is I've got uh, one or two hills between he and I, so I'm hoping the NFED in a horizontal orientation will allow me to do kind of an NVIS setup. We shall see. This is KY4 BDP. So right now it's looking like Ben still didn't hear me on the NFED antenna, which again is not necessarily the fault of the antenna. I was just hoping it would get me into this net. Let's switch back to the AV640. So heard the uh, uh, one of our club members uh, come in pretty well, but again, Ben is pretty weak on this particular antenna for this particular net. And most of these guys use a vertical orientation, which is what I, why I went to the 640 initially. But I know Ben is not vertically oriented. Well, thank you, Kilo Yankee 4, Victor Mike. This is Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo Delta Papa. Just testing out an NFED antenna. Was hoping Ben would hear me a little bit better, uh, given that he's a little bit horizontal and I'm uh, utilizing a horizontal antenna tonight. Just testing it out. Doesn't sound like he's able to hear me. So thanks for the relay there, Leonard. And we'll send it back to Net Control. This is KY4 BDP. Well, there we have it. Not the best result that we would have liked, but at the same time, that's ham radio. I believe Ben is only about, as a crow flies, maybe six miles away, but because of the hills between he and I, it just doesn't work. Now, Leonard's just enough further away, uh, probably about 20 miles away, that the Invis action of this antenna works really well. He gave me an S5, which is not great, but again, mostly ground propagation or either Invis. So was able to get relayed in utilizing the antenna, and sometimes that's what you're going to have to do. Well, let's go ahead and uh, 
close out this particular video. I've had a lot of fun uh, interacting with this NFED antenna. We've uh, showed you a couple of check-ins with this antenna, and we've also showed you how to go ahead and, uh, and install it. Now, I will end up taking it down more than likely and utilize it with our emergency communications trailer or as a, uh, a portable uh, antenna in one of my go boxes, probably an antenna uh, in my antenna go box. So would I recommend this antenna? Well, absolutely. You don't have to tune a whole heck of a lot as we showed, and I'll put this down in the description down below. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, numbers were actually quite good, although it did, it did tune low on the band, and that's pretty common um, observation by other YouTubers as well as some of the reviews that I read, that it will tune a little bit low, and all you have to do is shorten the wire a little bit uh, or just tune it on your radio, which is what I did here. You'll notice that I did, in fact, leave the tune on here on the radio. I was trying to do everything I could to uh, be readable by KK4JPX, but just wasn't able to tonight. Well, folks, if you like this content, please let us know down in the comment section below. If you like our field days, our radio, our antenna reviews and usage, if you like the emergency communications trailer, work days, field days, let us know. And we're trying to grow the channel to a thousand subscribers this year. I think we've got a really good chance, but we need your help. So for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, this is KY4BDP, Brian saying 73s. Thank <laughs> you.